my name is Derek Murphy. I am with the Intermountain Church Planters Association, one of you guys' partner ministries. And I uh, just want to say thank you for, thank you for your support uh, in planting churches in the region. Uh, you know what? Since I was here last, Emily Wallace joined our staff part-time. She's your own secretary here. Or I, I don't, so anyway, it's pretty cool. So she helps us out a little bit. It's pretty awesome. So uh, we are in the series, uh, People are the prize. The prize is, is what we're talking about here. And uh, before we get there, though, I was, I was thinking about this, this video, uh, really cool, uh, looking at the galaxies and looking at all that God created. And uh, how many of you have seen not only the, the Hubble Space Telescope, but how many of you have seen the James Webb Space Telescope? Some of the things that you can see with that thing are just amazing. And, uh, and I was thinking about this. It's like, it's, it's, we're told in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 6, it says that the same God who brought light out of darkness, he spoke and light came into our very soul. And I, I just was thinking about that when I was uh, watching that video. It's like the four words God spoke, let there be light, all that showed up. Uh, this, is, this is probably my, my, my messed up humor, but as it was scrolling across there, I thought like an alien head was going to pop out of me or something. It's like, what? <laughs> With the music, I was like, I was ready for something. But, uh, but that was the other thought that was going on. It's like, how cool is God? It's like, he's, he, he, can, he can speak four words, and all of that came into existence. It's just beautiful. And so we're here today. We're here today because we believe God can speak to us now through his word, through his spirit. And if four words can bring that, what, what can just a couple words that speak into our hearts actually do? To change us, to bring life, to reform our souls. It's pretty cool. So that's why we're here. That's what we're doing. And can I just start us off with some prayer as we think into that? Lord, I pray that you would be present here. Lord, we can sit here and we can just, I can talk through what I have planned and, and all that. And and, and work through without inviting your presence into the room. And I just don't want to do that. I have no interest. Lord, I, I really want to be here with you and with all these people experiencing what you have planned for us today. Because we know it's something spectacular. And we can only imagine what that might be. God, it's great, whatever it is. And so, Lord, just come alongside us today. Speak to us and work in us. And we pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, just to give you some background, like on this, this sermon series on the prize, uh, we, Mike Packer helped put this together, this whole, this whole sermon series, your own Mike Packer, and this is something that the Intermountain Church Planners is rolling out to all of our churches in the Intermountain West, and we're, we're preaching this all over the place, and so just want, and, and all the, the people who wrote the sermons were all pastors here in Utah. So I just want to say it's pretty cool that we here in Utah get to kind of influence what the church is doing regionally and, uh, and how we're thinking about how we can engage with and reach our friends and neighbors. So it's, it's, it's awesome. We always think about Utah being this kind of obscure, off in the middle of nowhere sort of thing where it's like only 3% of the population are Christians and we're irrelevant. And it's like, no, I think God is doing something really special here. And the fact that we, we, we are a minority of the population actually might be a strength because we're united and we're coming together and we want to see what God can do if we actually start praying and start thinking about how, how, do, we, how do we actually engage with people. If they're really the prize and there's something that can motivate us to, to actually continue to seek God, what, what would that look like if we did this together? And so I just want to say we're part of something bigger than ourselves. You guys are part of something that you're starting here that will actually influence hundreds and thousands of other people throughout the region as well. I just want to say thank you for doing that. And <clears throat> I don't know if you've been here through the whole series, but this idea of the prize. What is the prize? What are we running after? That's what we've been talking about. Mike started the series. Uh, last week, Sagi was preaching about how to share your story, how to share your testimony. Today, I'm talking about learning how to share your faith, learning how to share the gospel. And I just want to give a, a quick recap, though, about this idea of the prize. For Paul, this is something that he felt like was worth laying down his whole life for. People are worth everything to him. It's something worth running for. And, and in fact, it's, it's 
the only thing that Paul sees that you can take with you to heaven are people. You can't take all the things that you earn, your money, possessions, your house, but people will join us in heaven. So he's saying, I'm willing to throw everything I've got into the people around me on this side of heaven so that I can see them on that side of heaven. That's what Paul is motivated by, right? It's not, we, we're gifted heaven, but the prize, what we're, we're actually beating our body for and making it our slave is so that other people will be able to see Jesus and experience him. And their life could be changed by the light that can shine into the darkness because Jesus brings that light. So that's, that's what we're here doing today. And I hope that if you get out of here with one thing today, it's one tool. One tool you can use to share your faith. So today's message is going to be extremely simple. One tool. But we're going to start off with why are we, going to, why, why are we motivated to even use this tool, okay? And I want to share with you a story of one of my disciples. His name is Greg. Greg, he's, uh, he's, he started praying through his list of 10. Who, who actually has gotten their bookmark and filled it out? Here's my 10. Everybody, you, got, you, got your, you don't have to have it here, but if you have it, start praying for these. I, I pray for my 10 at 10 o'clock at night. I don't know what you do, but at 10 o'clock when I'm laying my head on the pillow, I'm saying, God, show up in these people's lives. So like, God, show me where I need to show up in these people's lives. And Greg started doing this about a month ago, okay? He wrote down his 10, and he started praying for them. And he, he, re, he told me at the beginning, he's like, I wrote down people, and I realized a lot of these people are people I haven't engaged with much recently. But they're people I love. They're people I want to see that uh, know Jesus. And so he starts praying. And a, about a week ago, he comes to me, and he's like, Derek, I'm, I'm totally freaked out. Like, I, I'm showing up. And praying every day, and these people are showing up in my life. Like, literally, one person texted me. Then the next day, another person called me. Two days ago, somebody was knocking on my door that was on my list. I haven't seen that person in four months. I'm like, hey, have you been praying for him? Yeah, I've been praying every day. Okay, what are you surprised about then, Greg? It's like, yeah, I guess that's true. He's like, Here, I'm free what I'm freaked out about is that I don't know what to do with them now. Like, I'm praying for them. And then God's literally bringing them to my front door. What am I supposed to do now? And so I, I, I was like, okay, let's, let's learn how to share your testimony, which is what T Soggy talked about last week. So we teach Greg how to tell his testimony. The next day, somebody calls him that's on his list. Somebody else. And is like, man, I'm, I'm struggling, Greg. I need some help. I, I know you've got a different sort of way of life. I'm an atheist, but I'm, I'm just struggling. My wife's pregnant. I've got rugrats running around, and I'm stressed, and my patience level is, like, really low. So what should I do? Greg's like, well, can I tell you my story? He talks him through his testimony. And then he lays down something I didn't even ask him to do. He laid down this challenge, and he's like, I'm going to get everybody I know who's a Christian to pray for you. And I'm going to pray that you grow in patience. And then let's meet in a week, and let's see if you've grown in patience. And if you have then you got to give God the glory. And he said, okay. <laughs> His name's Ian, and Greg and Ian are meeting tonight. So if you want to pray for Ian, uh, we'll see what happens. So we're, this is part of the beauty of, of this, this whole thing, of actually starting to pray for people. God starts to move in their life. God starts to move in your life. And beautiful things start to happen. And we're just in the middle of the story. That's why we're, we're in this sermon series and just say, it's not enough to just have a bookmark. You got to fill it out. It's not enough just to fill out a bookmark. You got to start actually praying for them. And then once you start praying for them, I promise you God will start working in their lives. And then you got to know what to do with them. <laughs> right? That's, that's the cool thing. But is it enough for Ian just to know that God is exists. I mean, that's cool. Going from athe being an atheist to knowing if, if patience grows in his life this week and he knows he did nothing for it and there was just a bunch of Christians praying for him. And he goes, oh, cool. God exists. Is that enough? It's, it's a start. We're happy about that. But we actually want Ian not just to know about God. We want him to surrender to God. To know that there's life if you come to Jesus and to start walking that path. That's what we want Ian to know. And so today we're talking about what do you actually do if you get to a point where Greg is at with Ian? 
you, you've had a, maybe a conversation, you've shared your story, and they're going, okay, what's next? Tell me more. And you're like, uh, I didn't get that far in the class. <laughs> well, now you're here. You're here, right? So we're talking about sharing your faith. And, and here's the cool thing is we don't have to learn to share good things. We don't have to learn to share good things. It's just what we naturally do. When you experience something good, we want to share it. Uh, I, was, I was talking with Justin over here, and uh, we were talking about flights from home. And uh, it's like, I don't know if you follow flight from home, but a couple years ago, I got tickets to Puerto Rico for $167. And I'm like, sweet, man. So I, I love to share flights from home with anybody because it's like, I can experience some cool things in this world, you know, on a budget <laughs> and, uh, and get around. And so it's like, that's a good thing. Yesterday, I had some, some friends that were in town. Uh, and in the morning, I made them German pancakes. Anybody ever had German pancakes? No? Okay. Well, come over to my house sometime. I'll, uh, I'll share with you. Uh, yeah, I'll give it to you some other time by my address. Uh, but I love when people stay at my house, I love to get up and make German pancakes because I love German pancakes. It's something that my family loves. And I love to share them with other people because it's something that is good in my life. And so when we experience good things, we love to share those good things. And the same thing is true when you experience God, when you experience His goodness, it's Letty, right? Yeah, Letty's out there. He, he was talking about his story he gave just a couple weeks ago here at Southeast. And I'm just out there talk, get, trying to get my coffee. And Letty's like, oh, I got to tell you about what God's doing in my life. And you're like, yes! It's like when he shows up, when the same God who brought light out of darkness brings light into your very soul, you can't help but talk about it. This is why we're told that we need to be rooted and established in his love. Because when that love saturates us, when it's actually poured out on us and we receive it, it just flows out of us. It's something that we can't help but share. And, and here's the encouraging thing, though, too. Uh, my mentor, Stephen Edwards, who's, who was the previous executive director for Intermountain Church Planners, he said to me, he said, says this a lot, that when you start to learn how to share the gospel, though, you start to actually learn to understand it in new ways. And then when you understand it in new ways, you actually experience it in new ways. So I think there's a, a both and going on here. Some of you might just need to sit here and say, yeah, God loves you. He's your father. He sent his son for you. Experience, drink that in. But then once you start sharing it, it intellectually gives you a different way of engaging with the gospel and it starts to just change you in whole new ways. So, so why, why though, would we share? Why do we share? Besides it just being something that's good. Well, I've got a passage for you out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is just right after, I, this is kind of cool. I didn't plan to say 2 Corinthians 4, 6, but this is the next chapter, right? This is what God's saying. If that's actually gone inside of your soul, that same God who brought light out of darkness, what the... James Webb and the Hubble Space Telescopes have seen happens inside of you. This is what happens in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For Christ's love compels us. We've received his love. It's so good. It can't help but pour out of us, right? Because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. So here's what he's saying. If we actually live in him, if we've received his love, we, it changes the way we see everything else. We start to see people with a, same, the, the, a different lens. God has changed us, literally changed us from the inside out, which is what the next verses say. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... The new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal 
through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. I've got a question for you. I've actually got six questions for you, okay? Just quick, raise your hand if you, if you, if you got it. How many of you identify with Christ? Okay, it's fine if you don't yet. How many of you identify as a new creation? Okay, how many of you identify as being reconciled to God? Okay, how many of you identify as a minister of reconciliation? Oh, there's a few less hands. All right, how many of you identify as a messenger of reconciliation and an ambassador of Christ? Okay. Let me, just, let me just ask, why were there fewer hands from, I, I'm a new creation, to I'm a minister of reconciliation? What, what's the, there's a disconnect here, right? It's like, what, what happened? Well, I just, I don't want to scare anybody here, but what Paul says, he doesn't say, if you're a new creation, I hope you become a minister of reconciliation. He doesn't say that. He says, if you're a new creation, you are a minister of reconciliation. You are. You can't be anything else. You, you actually experience God in this way. You are going to go out and you're going to share it. There, there, there's the, the two, one and the same, right? Not only are you that, you're actually committed to the message of reconciliation. Uh, not only are you a minister of the gospel, you're a preaching minister of the gospel in some way, in some form, in some place that you're, you've got influence. And you're an ambassador of Christ. How many of you, does that scare a little bit? It should scare us all a little bit, right? It's like, okay, I, I didn't sign up for public speaking. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, this is what Paul is saying. So at some level, we are responsible. And, and not only are we responsible, this is who you are. This is your identity. You can't disconnect new creation and minister of reconciliation. They're one and the same. That's who you are if you're in Christ. So what happens when we share? Romans 10 says this, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save unless... They believe in him. And how can they believe in him if they have never heard of him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how can anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring the good news. Okay, here we got a world. We, here with Intermountain Church Planners, I, I was with Steve and Mike, one of our new staff members, all this week, and we're going, okay, church attendance continues to decline, continues to decline year after year after year for the last 25 years. What are we going to do? How are we going to plant new churches? How are people going to come to know the gospel? Guess what? This says it right here. If you go out and you tell the gospel, guess what? There's going to be people who receive it. Guess what? There's going to be people who receive it and then they become new creations. And what happens when they become new creations? They also become ministers of reconciliation. And it just continues to spread God's goodness and his love and his mercy. But if we don't accept our identity, it's not, it's not a calling. It's just who we are. If we don't accept that and live in that, first of all, you're gonna, your, your faith is just going to continue to decline. You can't, you can't live outside of your identity and live a full life. So it'll be like taking, it's like taking a, a flower. You know what a flower needs to grow? You need soil and you need water, okay? If you take a flower and you don't put water in it, it's, it's not going to grow. It's going to die. If you take a flower and you put water in it, but you don't put soil in it, it's not going to grow. It's going to die. I know there's hydroponics. Just, just go with me, okay? Most of the time, that's the case. So it's like taking, if it, to, to live as a new creation, but not as a minister of reconciliation, it's like taking a flower out of the pot and saying, yeah, go and thrive and grow. You're going to wilt and you're going to die. So just to sit here and not go out and invest in people, 
will be a decline of your faith week after week, year after year, and you're going to wonder, why am I not on fire like I was when I first came to Jesus? Well, this is the reason why. You have to live inside of your identity. Now, there's a pastor here in Utah County named Logan Wolf. How many of you know Logan or have heard about Logan? Okay, well, he, he had a church he planted in 2011. And uh, he, he started off, he, he tells the story really, really well. He started off the first Sunday, he had three people, uh, his wife and his two kids. <laughs> so he preached a sermon to his wife. I'm like, oh, poor, poor wife. <laughs> so that's got to be rough. But he, he, he ministered for seven years. Uh, and they baptized a half a dozen people. And after COVID hit, they're just like, what in the world are we doing? They had opened another campus, and uh, they were, they're, you know, because another church that was shutting down asked him to come, and so he's preaching at two locations, and he's just running himself ragged, trying to run these different events and ministries, and he, COVID hits, and he's like, I got to do something different. And so he just starts training his people how to pray to understand who their, their, their circle of influence is, how to pray for those people, how to share those tes- their testimony with those people, and how to share the gospel. And then the last year and a half, they've baptized 97 people in Utah County. Isn't that amazing? Like, that's here, guys. That is here. That is one of our churches. And we're just going, okay, what can we learn from what Logan is doing? Because there's something... It's special happening in that church. I'm, I'm working, I'm on the management team of a church in Montana, and they just were like, man, we just want one baptism. We just want one baptism. Okay, I can, we can tell you what you need to do. This is what you need to do. And I'll, I'll tell you, Southeast, you, if, if, if each one of you start actually doing this, there, there won't be enough seats in this building. To fill. And so here, here's what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a simple explanation of the gospel called the two kingdoms. Very, very simple. It's culturally relevant as well. There's a lot of ways to tell the gospel. Uh, even in the Bible, there's a lot of different ways in which the gospel is told. There's all sorts of different uh, atonement theories and different things like that. You can spell it out But it doesn't matter how you say it if it doesn't actually mean anything to the people you're talking to. So this is something, this is the tool that Logan's been using. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through it and just explain it. And then I'm going to draw it on this board and have you write it with me. How many of you, by the way, got an index card when you came in? Better question is who doesn't have an index card? Anybody? Okay, Letty will get you hooked up with an index card uh, if you keep your hands up. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and, uh, and we're just going to walk through this two times. And then that's the rest of the sermon. So I don't, I don't want to give you bunches of ideas. I just want you to understand one tool that you can walk away with that you can actually use if you start praying for your list and people start knocking on your door. <laughs> you know what to do with them, okay? <clears throat> so let me explain the two kingdoms. What I've learned as I've gone out and watched the world and looked at what's going on is that there's two kingdoms. And one is the kingdom of light and the other is the kingdom of darkness. And here's the thing is we see both of these kingdoms in our lives. And one of the ways we see the kingdom of darkness is we see the kingdom of darkness and all the brokenness that happens in the world. Just, just look, we see a war going on in Ukraine right now. We see not only that, like more locally, we see kids in foster care here, broken families, marriages that are falling apart. I'm sure there's things in your life that you're going, man, this, this is a struggle. Like, this is really hard. We see brokenness all around us. But then this other kingdom, this kingdom of light, we, we see all around us as well. You see it. I don't know if you guys have looked up at the mountains the last two days before it was snowing. You know, it's snowing today. But they were crystal clear. It's like, man, you see the beauty of creation in the kingdom of light. 
We see the beauty of a, a, just a small child. Michael back here, he loves babies. And you see a baby and it's just like, man, his, light, his face lights up. And I'm just like, that is the beauty of creation. Like, you see what God actually is doing in the world. New life. The, the, the new re, like relationships when they're going really well. It shows this light and this love. Like, we can all see goodness all around us. So these two kingdoms, the, the kingdom of darkness is identified by brokenness. The kingdom of light is identified by love and beauty and goodness. And the difference between these two kingdoms is their king. The king of the kingdom of darkness, this broken world, is Satan. And the thing that he's told us, if I was going to identify him in one word, it's liar. And the original lie that Satan told us is that we're our own God. We're in charge. Which sounds awesome, kind of on paper. Like, I get to do whatever I want. But once you say yes to that lie, then now you're in charge of the brokenness in this world and in your life. And, and so some people deal with this brokenness just through trying to numb it out, right? It's like sex, alcohol, drugs, whatever your, your thing of choice is, just to get numb and not think about it. Others do it through trying to insulate themselves by just say, like, if I have a little bit of money, if I've got a title, if I've got an education, then I don't have to deal with the brokenness at the same level. And some of us just, we deal with it by just trying to be a good person. You know, like, if I could be a good citizen, if I could even just go to church every week and be a good religious person, like, that's how I'm going to deal with the brokenness in the world. And those can all work, but they only work for a certain amount of time, is the problem. And so, that, that you know, the, the, the high wears off, or the guy or the girl leaves, or you don't get the, the promotion, or the title gets pulled away from you, or, you know, even you, you fail, you don't actually live up to the religious standards. Or maybe you do get the title of the promotion and you find out it actually didn't fulfill me in the way I was thinking it would. Or you do keep the rules and all you find is that it makes you conceited and it makes you look down on other people. And you realize, man, this brokenness is still just here. What am I supposed to do with it? And that's where the king of the kingdom of light comes in. The king of the kingdom of light, his name is Jesus. And if I was going to identify him in one word, it's love. It's love. And, and, and here's the thing, is that he sees that we have this broken world. And he sees it, and he decided, hey, I'm going to actually come into that. And he did. He came into the middle of our brokenness, and he dealt with it. Like, our brokenness, we couldn't deal with it. He decided, I'm going to give up everything. I'm going to lay down my own life to deal with this brokenness. So his, he came into our brokenness. Our brokenness killed him. And guess what? That wasn't the end of him. Just like it would be for the rest of us. That would be our end. Our brokenness would kill us. Instead, he overcame our brokenness, rose from the dead, and he's called the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So this, this idea that there's two kingdoms, he's actually over both of them, all of them. And here's the thing, is he's invited us into the kingdom of light. And he's only asking for one thing. He's asking that we are willing to lay down our crown and acknowledge his. That he's king of kings and lord of lords, and we're not. Okay. Start to make sense? That's, that's, that's right there. That's the two kingdoms. And I know that you're going, I can't do that. Okay, but here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go, and we're gonna, I'm going to write it out, and I want you to write it out with me. Everybody, I should have asked you, do you also need a pen? Anybody need a pen? All right. Laddie, are you still around? Uh, if you need a pen, raise your hand. He'll bring it over, and, uh, if, if, or somebody will. If, if somebody's willing to help, that would be great. And I'm going to draw <clears throat> uh, this out. So, and you're going to draw it out with me. Is everybody on, on board? Okay. I'm going to move this <clears throat> so that you can see. Okay. And here, here's actually how you want to start this. It doesn't usually go well with people if you just start into a diatribe. <laughs> just, just saying. So 
uh, most of the time, you're, you're, this is going to come after a conversation has been flowing for a while. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to usually come after you've already shared your story, your testimony. So you've talked to them about what God has done to change your life already before you get here. And so a good way to describe this is to say, hey, it's an invitation. Uh, do you want to hear about the story that changed my life? Can you guys say that back to me? Good. That's easy, right? That's pretty easy. And if they say no, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, don't tell them anyway. Yeah, we, 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 I mean, you can, but it's not going to work. Okay? I'm just telling you right off the bat. Um, you know, do you want to know the story about what, of what changed my life? Sure. Okay, let me tell you. Okay, that's how you, that's how you can start. Okay, I've noticed there's two kingdoms. Can you guys draw two circles? Okay, one is the kingdom of light, and the other is the kingdom of darkness. And so, what I've noticed uh, is that these are things that we, we actually see these kingdoms lived out in our life in our world. And if I was going to describe the kingdom of darkness, it's, it's identified by brokenness. And you just draw a line, like almost like there's, these are two worlds, two different worlds, and this one's getting cracked in half. So the kingdom of darkness, <clears throat> we see that all around us. We see it uh, in, in just, there's death. I mean, you, you can contextualize this based on the conversation. I did this with somebody just a few days ago, and we'd been having an hour-long conversation, and all the things I referenced were things that they had, we had talked about already in that conversation, which was really cool. And, and so you, you have division. I mean, we even see it in the church, right? You see church splits, and you see fights and all this stuff. We see the kingdom of darkness inside of us and inside of the world. And then there's this, key, this kingdom of light, and we see it and just the beauty of what life brings. And I usually draw a heart here, okay? We see it in the love shared. We see it in just, uh, you know, there's, there's the exciting things. Just share what is exciting in your life. Share what's exciting in the world around you. And the thing that I notice is the difference between these two kingdoms is their king. The king of the kingdom of darkness, which I usually draw a little crown here, fill it in. The king of the kingdom of darkness, his name's Satan. <clears throat> and if I was going to describe, describe him in one word, it's a liar. <clears throat> now, the, the original lie that Satan gave us is that we're our own king. We're in charge of our life. And the, the folly with that statement is that once you become your own king, which sounds great, you actually have to deal with the brokenness in your life and in your world. Which is really hard to deal with, but we, we find ways. Some of us, we deal with it through numbing. You know, we, we do it with sex, alcohol, drugs. I just wrote sad here to, to identify that. Some of us deal it through like trying to find ways to insulate our lives. We find, you know, work, uh, work, we find uh, just education, money, put a dollar sign here. Those are things that we can do to insulate ourselves. And some of us just try to become really good, good citizens. I'll even draw church. We want to be good church people. Show up every Sunday, do the right thing. But here's the thing is that these work, but they only work for a short amount of time. Eventually, girl or the guy leaves, the high wears off. You might not get the promotion at work, or maybe you get demoted, in fact, or you, you, you lose out on that, that house. Or if you get the promotion, maybe you realize it's not actually as fulfilling as you originally thought. And then down here, just being a good person, a good citizen, a, a model uh, churchgoer, it's like, you know, you, 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 we can't live up to that standard. You get to the point where you, you're either faking it or you're really good at it and you start looking down your nose at everybody else. So there's either shame or there's pride on this side of it. And so they all work. They only work for a certain amount of time and then they fail. So the, 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 good, the good thing is that there's this king of the kingdom of light. 
and I do a crown and usually throw some, you know, some, some bright shininess coming off of it. And I, oops, I put a J. That's a, I, I know how to spell Jesus, I promise. So Jesus, and if I was going to describe the kingdom, the kingdom of light, it's love. And here's the amazing thing about this king is that he actually was willing to come into our world. He came into our world and he dealt with our brokenness. So much so that he came into the middle of the death of our world and he died. But then the beautiful thing is that he dealt with death and he rose again. And he became the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So he is over all kingdoms. And here's the thing, is he's invited us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light so that you can experience his love and his goodness and his beauty in this life and in the next. The only thing he's asking us in return is for us to lay down our crown and to acknowledge his and call him our Lord. And then here's the thing that you ask. First of all, does that make sense? You, there's some of you probably sitting out here right now. I just walked through this with my wife last night, and she's like, that doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, oh, great, I'm preaching on this tomorrow. <laughs> so it's like, hopefully I can walk her through this. It's like, that, that doesn't make sense to me. There's, there's words that we're using. Like, I mean, the, the great thing is that our, our culture, you know, we've, there's ways to tell the gospel that we've used in the past, like the four spiritual laws. It requires some knowledge of Scripture. We did all this without using one biblical reference, which might sound negative to some of us, but our culture is, doesn't understand the Bible most of the time. So you, we're, we're coming in. I, that's intentional that we came in this way. We could back all this up with Scripture if we wanted to. But there's biblical words like Satan and Jesus. And, and people might go, hey, well, I don't understand this. And so that's what you want to know. Did they understand what you just said? And if they did, then the next question I ask is, what kingdom do you think you're a part of? And then they can tell you. And if they say, well, I'm, I'm part of the kingdom of God, the, the kingdom of light. And you just ask, okay, well, tell me about that. Let me hear about your, your faith. And you might find out, well, no, they, do, they don't really understand it. And you can help explain. Or they say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the, the kingdom of darkness. And then you can ask, well, what's keeping you from accepting this invitation to be part of the kingdom of light and to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? And then you get to hear what they have to say, right? And so it's, it's a very invitational way of explaining the gospel. So <clears throat> do you guys feel like you have a good tool? How does it sound? Yeah? Okay. Here's what I said. I said, I'm coming to tell you, give you one tool. I started off by telling you why you should use this tool. And then I said I was going to walk you through the tool once, have you draw it with me a second time, and then my sermon's done. Okay? So where are we at in this process? Your sermon's done. All right. So I'm going to ask you to, I'm ask you to do something here. I want you to practice this. I want you to practice this with a Christian. Okay? Because the first time I practiced this, I practiced it with somebody who wasn't a Christian. Thankfully, I, I fumbled through it and I missed half of it, but they still, they still came to Christ, which is really cool. Uh, and they got baptized, which was awesome. But um, share it with somebody who's a Christ follower. Uh, that's, that's the first one. Do we have these up here? All right. Walk through it. If you have a small group or a Bible study that you're part of, walk through it with your small group. Do it in a group setting. It'll give you more confidence, I promise. Walk through this a couple times. And then what I want you to do is I want you to start praying over these names, which you already have been doing. And, and start asking God, who of this list of 10 people might be open to hearing this? And just let God work. You don't have to force it. We're told in Isaiah chapter 40, he who waits on the Lord is mounted up like wing, on wings like eagles, right? So it's like we, we just wait on God and he will do the work. Instead of us having to run and grow weary, he will mount us up and he'll do the work. Do we believe that? So just start praying. 
Not everybody on your list is ready to hear this. But I believe there's at least one person on your list that's ready to hear it. And so you just start asking God, who on this list can I share this good news with? Okay? And here's the other tool that I want to give you. Is that you've got it on a 3 by 5 card, which I think is an awesome way to share it. But we also um, have another tool for you. And it's a sticker. So I actually have this sticker on the back of my phone. And if you want to, grab one of these on your way out. Uh, John, John Huey over here, he has it on the back of his computer. So uh, if you want to grab one of these and put it on your phone or put it somewhere on a water bottle, uh, I, I saw Justin's water bottle. has got stickers all over it. So uh, you, you, can, you can do that, and then you actually have a tool with you all the time. Actually, the first time I heard this was from Logan Wolf, and we were, we were just sitting down for coffee. He had his phone out on the table, and, and I was like, hey, Logan, what is that? And then he, walk, he walked me through it. And I was like, that's good. That's good stuff. And so uh, you can do the same. It's it just a, a conversation starter, right? And, and then you can ask the invitation. Well, that's the story that changed my life. Do you want to hear the story that changed my life? Can I pray over us? Okay. Lord, we pray that you would actually come alongside us and you would work in our lives. Lord, that you would, you would move in the people that you've put on our hearts to pray for. Lord, and we pray that you would bring your word into their hearts. Lord, you'd use us. You'd use us to tell our testimony. You'd use us to share the gospel. And that the same God who brought light out of darkness would bring light into their souls. Lord, we need, we need you to show up or none of this is going to happen. Lord, I pray for each person here at Southeast Christian Church, Lord, that they would know that they are a new creation and a minister of reconciliation. And Lord, I pray that you would give them the courage through your spirit, Lord, to live with both parts of their identity activated. And I pray this all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.